Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Icewind Dale. We're on the third level of the uh, Tower of the Severed Hand. It's clearly an elven tower. You can tell by the name. Yeah. Oh. Well, these stairs look like they were purposely collapsed to prevent entry from the level below. Hm, interesting. Um, I did notice that uh, our special bag of holding is really ready for us to uh, shake it again. Item drained. Does that mean I can't do it anymore? Or was it just because I loaded up the game fresh? Maybe it's because I loaded up the game fresh. Alright, well, I guess it's not ready. Let's go ahead and uh, go upstairs. Don't see anything that jumps out at me as... Uh, the needs of the many. Lathus. Lathius. Oh, is that you? That appears to be you. Forward. Hello! I have defended the hand of the Seldarin at all costs, and will continue to do so. Cursed with unlife, my duty remains clear. I stand guard against those who would defile what remains of the Seldarin's hand. Well, I guess that could... It does make a little bit more sense, but still, I don't know. That, that Making a tower in the shape of a hand doesn't seem that elvish. It'd be more like the Seldarin's tree or something like that. Um, and if, if you're guarding this place, uh, you know, is it really a curse? I mean, did, did you not volunteer for it or something? Uh, then you have no quarrel with us. Our intentions are not to cause more damage to the hand. Uh, we have no time to deal with the ramblings of another spirit. Remove yourself from our path or face the consequences. I'll go with the first one. I will be the judge of that. Speak your intentions clearly. Evil plagues the land. We seek the aid of Laryl to ha help us find the source. We seek the great treasures of the Severed Hand. No. Perhaps you are not the miscreants I had thought you were. If what you say is true, it is my duty to aid you if it will further the ways of the Seldarin. I am Lethius Enarl, blade singer of the Seldarin. Uh, Lethius, you speak of your duty to the hand. I'd like to know what that means. Some say blade singers are the elite of elven warriors, trained from an early age in the ways of weapons, magic, and diplomacy. Blade singers carry out the elven ways and way in words and action. Yes. When life prospered in the Seldarin's hand, it was my duty to defend the cause of the Seldarin. When the time of our darkest hour approached, I swore to protect Laryl and the Hand until I had no more blood to be spilled. To do any less would, to disgra would disgrace my kind. For many days, I fought alongside my brothers and sisters. Scores after scores of orcs and goblins fell as my blade sang through the air. Although I saw nothing but the color of my enemy's blood, we were losing ground. When we realized the fall of the Hand was inevitable, we were forced to take desperate action. Sehanin Tower was our most prized tower. Inside were the chambers where we crafted our finest weapons and artifacts. We could not let our magics fall into the hands of the Horde, or the surrounding lands would suffer for centuries after the Hand fell. A desperate plan was created that would ensure that ensure this would never happen. All the artifacts within Sehanin Tower were set to release their magic so that the tower would destroy itself. Before these energies were released, however, we planned to lead as many of the orcs and goblins as we could into Sehanin. The plan required one who was willing to lead the orcs and goblins into the tower. One who would know the sacrifice had to be made. One willing to die. You, you know, you could have just given the one a, uh, like a ring of dimension door or a ring of teleport or something like that. You know, some sort of item that would, uh, whisk you away. I decided that it would be me. I would make the sacrifice. My duty was clear. When the time came, the Horde pursued me as I climbed to the top. As my enemies stormed the room at the pinnacle of the tower, I fought with blade and faith for the last time. With the wall at my back and the room filled with orcs and goblins, I heard the first explosions from the base of the tower and smiled. I died, and I knew I had died, but I awoke. That was when I saw myself. Not as an elven blade singer, but as a twisted undead monster. Something brought my body back into this form, but it left my mind intact. So here I am, standing before what was once known as Sehanin Tower. A monster, perhaps, but one thing still remains clear. Uh, remains the same. My duty to myself in the hand of the Seldarin. Well, Lathius, I'd, I'd hear what you know about how to find Laryl. Unfortunately, I have not seen Laryl in some time. 
I know that during the fall of the Hand, he and his wizards locked themselves atop Labellus Tower. They sought a way to save our people through magic. But from looking around, something must have gone terribly wrong. Seek a way into Labellus Tower. Perhaps you will find an answer there. Um, okay. We met what was left of the blade singer Lethius. He told the tale of the great sacrifice he made in the destruction of Sehenin Tower. Uh, I should point out that uh, the Blade Singer uh, kit in Second Edition was one of those uh, often derided uh, kits as being overpowered, and it was quite powerful. But again, I will say that this is a good example of what the kit was for. So you know, if you're a player and you choose that kit, there should come a time when you've got to choose between your party and the elves, and your kit dictates that you ha must choose the elves. Or at least, you know, I mean, it, not necessarily side with the elves against the party kind of thing, but, you know, something where it's like, uh, um, you know, the rest of your party wants to go off and do something else, but uh, you gotta go help the elves. So, um, and uh, it should come fairly regularly um, where you've got to make decisions between, you know, helping yourself or helping the elves kind of thing. So, it, it it's basically role-playing requirements, but if a dungeon master isn't including those, then he's just giving the uh, um, player a free gift, really. Alright, well, uh, many thanks, Lethius. I shall return. For Blade and Faith. There's an optional uh, elven deity of uh, blade singing. I can't remember what his name is right now. I'll have to go look that up. Uh, the needs of the many, yes, yes, yes. Uh, my duty's clear. Alright, so do we have a door? We do have a door there. We've got a door there. So are these going to lead us into the other, um, what I assume are going to be, like, five, uh, tower offshoots kind of thing. Still kind of surprised that it's a, that, that they call it a hand and not, like, tree. But hey, who am I to uh, who am I to judge, right? All right, let's go. Uh, task. Let's go f detect traps. Nothing. Okay. Agreed. Probably get you back on uh, finding traps. Okay. Nothing is. Uh, oh, Leyland. Okay. Done. I don't see any containers or anything in here. Which is kind of a shame. Let's just double check. I know it's around here somewhere. I don't see uh, much. Maybe there aren't any uh, enemies on this floor. I That'd be want. nice. Hello! Well, other than the uh, possibility of fighting these guys, I suppose. Greetings, sir. Welcome, welcome. Don't be taken aback by all the wonderful items I have for sale. Come, come. I'm, my name is Leyland, and I'm the proprietor of this establishment. Well met. I'm called Ald. No insult intended, but your establishment doesn't seem to be able to service anyone. Surely you jest, sir. Why, my store has some of the finest wares from across the land. Just look around. Look at that rug hanging on the west wall. Quality of this caliber can only be found from the far reaches of the east. Hmm, perhaps you can show me some of your other quality wares. Ooh. Ooh. I like. All right, so he does sell arrows. He does sell magical arrows. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Lots of magical missiles. Elven healing wine. Heals 2d8 hit points. Wow, that's actually pretty good. This bottle of elven wine also has the properties of a healing potion. During one of the elven festivals, the priests of, Se of the Seldaran's Hand imbibed too much that day and accidentally added a barrel of elven wine to a mixture that was intended for healing potions. Of course they did. Uh, rotted honey leather. This used to be a highly prized piece of honey leather. Honey leather is a really light canvas used by the elves to protect against rain and dampness. Although it tears very easily, elves use it to make tents and to protect their camping gear. Uh, Moth-eaten thistle down. This used to be v a very fine quality grayish material before the moths began to eat through it. 
Thistledown is a highly prized material from which cloaks of elven kind are fashioned. It is very light and does not snag easily on branches. Due to its high quality, the elves had very little trouble enchanting it. Um, I seem to have unlimited numbers of those, but I kind of doubt that you can use them for anything. Elven sewn gloves. Cold resistance plus 5%. These gloves have been made from the highest quality, quality cloth and furs available in the land. Hand-sewn by talented elven tailors, these gloves were very common among the people of the Sildaran's hand. Outsiders have also found it appealing, as they provide ample warmth and protection from the harsh cold in the north. Uh, I don't know that I'll get those. Elven-sewn boots, cold resistance plus five. Elven-sewn cloak. I mean, technically, if no one's wearing anything, that, that could be useful. The Dire Old Loot of Pelon K. Wow, that is expensive. Pelon K would never appear in, the, in history books for his musical talents. If it wasn't for his famous loot, no one would, uh, would have ever remembered him at all. Born in Sembia and raised in a musical family, Pelon K never took his performances seriously. K made dozens of enemies everywhere he went because of his acidic wit and appetite for confrontation. Sages believe that Melil frowned upon Pelon's antics, and that Talos found Pelon's attitude to be quite amusing. The avatar of Talos watched Pelon start a fight over fight with over twenty men in a bar one night. As a gift for such destructive entertainment, Talos touched the loot that was laying next to Pelon's unconscious body. After that night, Pelon discovered that he could make men go berserk just by playing his loot in their direction. He took great delight in setting mercenaries and sailors against each other for several weeks. Eventually, Pelon K was laid low by a grim-featured warrior with a crossbow who didn't let Pelon get close enough to employ his magical loot. The unknown warrior threw the loot into the Sea of Fallen Stars. And somehow it managed to get to the Frozen North? Uh, so it's got Dire Charm ability. Eh, I think I'll stick with the one that I've got. Uh, and some bags. So... Um, well, that bone marrow belt sells for a lot. Um, not usable by any good. Well, that's right. Um, well, that can be sold. I suppose these can be sold as well. Wow, they sell for quite a bit. Jeez. You buy scrolls? You do buy scrolls. Um, can't use Entangle. Which, again, shouldn't be a thing, but okay, whatever. Eh, it's not really worth it at this point. I just have the one. Um, I don't think I want to sell any of those. Do have any gems for sale? Uh, to sell? Yes, I do. Uh, longsword plus one. Was I going to sell that, uh, bastard sword? I think I was. should sell that. What about, uh, heavy crossbow of accuracy? The Thacko is pretty good, but, uh, the rate of fire would probably be very, very low. And, of course, I wouldn't be able to equip this uh, in on anyone who uh, has m uh, a shield, so. Yeah, let's go ahead and sell those two. Um, I guess I'll keep those. Alright, to start with... Um, Buy all of the magical arrows. Tempted to buy all the magical bolts as well. Because I do have crossbow laying around. Alright, um... I mean, that cost a lot, but, uh, 10 and 15 of these, yeah, I think I will. Well, I'll need to think about it. Uh, I will buy these bullets plus two. Wow, that is, that is a lot. 
Bullets of fire plus two. Wait, did I not? Oh, he has an unlimited number of those. My mistake. There's an unlimited number of uh, elven healing wine, too. Alright, let's see. Um, first of all, those can go to her. Ah, uh, I did sell a uh, weapon that I didn't mean to sell. Hmm. No, not his. Not hers. I kept this one. Well, she doesn't have anything equipped right there, right now, anyway. Eh, whatever. I'll figure it out later. Um... I suppose I don't really need a whole lot of these uh, on her at the moment. Although, considering that uh, he has an unlimited number of those, I'm almost tempted to just uh, d ditch all of the uh, the regular... Uh, um, ...bolts anyway. So let's see, acid arrow is 1d6 plus 1, plus 2d6 acid damage. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and put those away for now. Alright, I don't know that I really need anything else that he's got at the moment. I've got, uh... I can always come back, I suppose. Uh, do you have anything else to say? Onward. I don't understand. Why do you tend shop in this destroyed fortress? The severed hand was destroyed hundreds of years ago. Have you been sipping too much elven wine, sir? The severed hand? What in Corella's name is that, sir? Is that what you southerners call the hand of the Seldarn? Destroyed? Sir, I do not mean to be insulting, but if you look outside my store, you'll see many elves alive and well going about their daily business. Tell me about the other elves in the hand. Of course, sir. As you have probably noticed, the hand of the Seldarn is more of a fortress. We are always in co constant preparation for battle against the Dark Horde of the North. As you have seen, the levels below the house the majority of the elven forces. The level you are standing on is the commons area, where you will find our fest hall, tavern, and the store of yours truly, me. From this level, you can e you can obviously see the five towers that protrude from here, Corellan Tower, Sheveresh, Sheveresh Tower, Why is it not like Aravain Tower? What about uh, Hanali Tower? Well, admittedly, that would be a little bit weird um, in a, uh, for a fortress. I, mean, I suppose it kind of understand, uh, makes sense, but he, he's, he is not that well known. Sayanine Tower, Lebelus Tower, and Solanor Tower. And, and why not, uh, Rillifane Tower? Tell me about Corellan Tower. Some would call Corellan Tower the place where many, if not all, the important decisions are made regarding the Artel Quasir of the North. As of late, most of our time has been spent in preparation, preparing a defense against the Horde, almost as if the fight was going to be taken to our front door. But fear not, sir. The Artel Quasir of the North will, will crush the Horde long before their feet touch this fortress. Tell me about Sheverish Tower. In Sheverish Tower, you will find where the armed forces of the Artel Quasir of the North train and equip themselves for battle. From blade to bow, Kalesa takes every elf and hones them to do battle with the Horde. Perhaps she can give you a few lessons as well, sir. Uh, what, uh, can you tell me about Sehanin Tower? Deep within Sehanin Tower is where the, we enchant the weapons and armor used against the Horde. It is one of the most heavily guarded towers to ensure that the craft, as well as its items, do not fall into the wrong hands. If that were to happen, it would easily turn the tide of the war against us. I'm interested in hearing about Labellus Tower. As you wish, sir. Labellus Tower is where the Wizards of the Hand spend their time if they are not busy within Sehanin Tower. Inside is one of the most extensive libraries covering elven history and lore in the realms. Located on the highest level of the tower is one of our pinnacle achievements, the Astrolab. Astrolab? 
There, Laryl and his wizards study everything regarding time and the stars. Have they made any contact with the uh, spelljammers? Uh, Solanor to Tower. Tell me about. Tell me what you know of it. Within this tower is where our devout priests reside. Why is that not like a tower of archers? <laughs> They provide various clerical services to all to us as well as tend the sick and wounded. If you should ever need their services, they are at your disposal, sir. I must take my leave. Farewell. Okay, well, at least we found a, uh, a shop. Didn't need to go back to uh, someplace else. Uh, I wonder if we're not going to have any monsters on this level. That would be pretty cool. Indeed. Aha, there is something over here. Uh, we've got uh, Potion of Mind Focusing and Potion of Absorption. Chuck those into our uh, potion bag there. Talk to the elves in a minute. Just looking to see if there's... Uh, oh, I completely missed that there was that up there. Any goodies in here? A couple more potions. Uh, insulation and insight. And over here we get... Clarity and, of course, healing. Uh, we only have three healing potions, so I'll go ahead and do that. What else do you have? Perception. What is clarity? Uh, prevents feeble mind. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Insight is Wisdom 18. And Electrical Resistance. A table in what used to be a fest hall. I'm not sure that... So, fest hall is a... A ruined performing stage. Uh, fest hall is essentially... Uh, a term coined by the authors, I think it was specifically Jeff Grubb, not uh, uh, Ed Greenwood, um, as a way to include uh, brothels without actually saying brothels. Um, so I guess technically this is supposed to be a brothel. Apparently. That's... I'm not sure that the uh, game makers quite understood that. That that's what this is supposed to be. It shall be done. Or what they said it is, as opposed to what it actually should be. It should just be a tavern. Adventurers, <laughs> I never thought anyone in the, of the living world would have made it up to these parts of the hand ever again. Nevertheless, let me prevent, present myself to you. The name's Talanus. Talanus St Songbender, singer extraordinaire, master of the eight-string mandolin, lover of beautiful women, teller of grand tales, and best of all, minstrel to the hand. Uh, perhaps I'll listen to a song of yours later. Per no. <laughs> uh, greetings, Talanus. It is good to see someone that isn't hellbent on sending us to the abyss. Why is this so? Aye, as, ad as odd as it may seem, a few of us retained some semblance of our former selves after Laryl cast his spell. Everyone else has either gone mad or is intent on killing everything they see. How did all of this come about? Let me entertain you with song, and perhaps this will answer some of your questions. Would you care for an old tale about Laryl? Perhaps a sad tale about the union we had with our dwarven neighbors? Um... I guess I would hear the tale, tale of Laryl. Oh, great. I'm not singing this. In time of growth, did the elves deem so that a haven in the north be made? They searched for one, strong of mind, strong of will, to bear this burdensome task. Though the wizards were many, and diligence all had, one of wisdom they found, Laryl shined above all. Ride did he across frozen lands, ascending the peaks in the spine of the world. Beasts did he ki battle, and darkest of hordes forthright in his quest. Laryl conquered all. Winters came, winters went, through dark darkest cold night, the one pushed through. In the midst of this tundra, a place he did find, home for the elves, Laryl did crown. Uh, can you tell me of the tale of the dwarves and, uh, and the elves, and can you not do it in song or poem? Of course. Yeah, I figured. In time of strife against the Dark Horde, a friend we found in the ones short and stout. United as one, our forces did fight. In battle we charged and drove the Dark back. 
We danced and we drank with victory in hand, an old enemy vanquished a new ally behind. Agreement both made to craft items of light, weapons of might, artifacts of power. For years upon years our bond remained strong, in times of prosperity even in adversity. When the darkness returned, its form we were blind, the dwarves had betrayed us, weapons given to orc kind. Knife and back, deception instead of friendship. Th that is what dwarves give to those of elven kind. Alrighty. I think we're here hurt enough. Uh, this lift has been beyond use and repair for many decades. Well, let's go back on to... Uh... Okay, so that goes somewhere. Um... To Solonor Tower. I don't think I'd want to go there first. Let's just move, uh, move around with uh, Island Wee. Shadowed Elf. You guys aren't going to fight me, are you? No? Uh, any of you want to talk to me? There's nothing to say. They seem to be fading away. Table in the Destroyed Commons. Doesn't seem to be anything to loot in here. Yep, nope, I am not seeing much. At least the elves aren't attacking us. I am quite pleased with that. Get, get on out. Thank you. Alright, so that's leading up to another tower. Got another door here. Let's get back onto detecting traps. This area. Okay. Well, let's see what's on this table. Uh, we've got a scroll of Cone of Cold. Very nice. Some money. Uh, cold resistance and healing. Can't really look at anything. There's nothing else to uh, find, so... Of course. Let's go ahead and get everyone else back here so that Ald can talk to... Uh, that ghost. Um, hmm. So we've got one up th that way, which we have not actually found. We've got one there. Uh, there's one there. I guess there's going to be one there, one there. Of course. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hi. Have you come to play with me? I haven't had anyone to play with for so long. My name is Saria. It's nice to meet you. Have you seen my mother? I'm afraid not, little one. Who is your mother? Mother is mother. She owns this place. When strangers came to the hand, mother lets them rest here. Did you want to play now? Where did your mother go? Mother said there was a lot of fighting downstairs and that we should stay here. There was so much noise. When the noise got really loud, mother began to cry. She told me to hide under the bed and not to let anyone in. Mother said she was going to help and that she'd come back to play with me soon. She locked the door and I haven't seen her since. That's okay, Mother is probably busy helping. She'll come back soon. Uh, little one, do you think your mother will mind if we, if I rest here for a while? Nope, after you rest, then we can play! Oh. Apparently that's how I rest, okay. I can't play just yet, maybe later, farewell. Okay. Done. Oh, let's go back in here and see if we can reveal what Okay. Chevrush Tower. Let's go see what's up here. That is Corellan Tower. Oops. Wrong, uh... Ah, there's a door. Back on detecting detecting traps. We've got an item there. Uh, more beds. Don't see anything to look at. 
No one appears to be in here either. Hmm. An unidentified potion. We've got emotion hope. Uh, another potion of clarity, and another potion of strength. Okay. Ah, I see. Alright, so... That has collapsed. Okay, so we're going to have to figure out another way uh, up there. Well, for now, let's go ahead and move those there. Um... How many potions of healing do you have? Four. Let's give that to you. Oh, whoops. Perception and, uh, oh yeah, cold resistance. Right, let's see if we can identify this potion. Burduskin Black Brew. This dark drink was named after the merchant from Burdusk, who concocted this brew. Burduskin merchants were always in a hurry to complete their various deals and felt hampered by the effects of fatigue and the need to sleep. Upon drinking this brew, the effects of fatigue and weariness disappear, letting the drinker continue with whatever he was doing. Removes fatigue as if the user had had a full night's sleep. Yeah, full, if I had, like, a whole bunch of those at once, yeah, maybe that would be useful, but... Give these to you. Go ahead and put those away. Do you have fifth level spells yet? Oh, you do. Excellent. Let's rem let's mem let's uh Well, I'll do that uh, in between episodes since uh, oh, you know what? Yes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, they're just regular arrows. Never mind. Still, that's not too bad. I'll take regular arrows. Ah, oh, I love that item. Never run out, beautiful bag of randomness. Uh, what was I going to do? What else was I going to do? Oh, yeah, you've got potions of strength. Um... There we go. Your command? Onward. Alright, everyone, just get together. There we go. You can have that. You can have that. I should actually use these a bit more often. Alright, well, uh, anyway, um, did I, uh, I did not. There we go. Uh, in the next episode, um, I guess we'll go up one of these, uh, towers... Oh, uh, yeah, I need to reveal what that one is. That's, uh... So that's going to be Sehanin Tower. Um, so we've got uh, Solonor Tower, that's the priests. Uh, Shevaresh Tower... Uh, I forgot exactly what they said that one was. Um... Well, maybe we'll just uh, start with Corellan Tower and work our way around. I was trying to think if there was uh, going to be... Uh, you know, which tower might be least likely to give us anything other than just goodies. Uh, but I think we'll just start with that one and work our way around. How this, uh, uh, you know, so this this is a circular uh, level, and uh, you've got, you know, a tower going up here, 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 and a tower going up here. That doesn't look like a like a hand. That's That's like, I don't know, like a crown or something. It's... I think someone was uh, paying too much attention to the host tower of the arcane as well. Anyway, um, that's it for this episode. In the uh, next one, I'll head up Corellan Tower. See you then, everyone.